great pleasure to, uh, in many ways, welcome Mr. Tomo Saxena to our university. Um, I think Mr. Murthy will give you a brief uh, biographical sketch of Professor Mr. Prabhu Saxena, but more than anything, he's a dear friend of the university, has been a strong supporter of our initiative. Uh, he holds a very senior position within the Ministry of Finance, heading the uh, Foreign Investment Promotion Board. But today he's going to speak to us on a very important topic which is connected to promoting transparency and uh, accountability in the government system. I am also very happy to be here to come to an institution that radiates so much of positive energy and it's full of promise. I must also compliment all these students here because they have a special privilege. All through their life they can call themselves as the first batch of this institution which I am sure will emerge qualitatively much different from the rest. Uh, I would be, before coming for the seminar, I had a Google search to find out how many laws do we have in this country. As a student of law, you will be amazed uh, with various types of legislation, some known, some unknown. And the Google search told me that about 1162 central legislation as on February 2009 and there is no data about how many laws do various states in this country have. But of all these laws, there is one law about which everybody seems to be celebrating. About a week back, NDTV came up with their first RTI awards. So everybody takes to talk about right to information. It has emerged as a showpiece legislation, as a flagship legislation. Why is it so? Why is there so much of excitement about right to information? And after all, we have anti law in law. We have laws on every possible subject. I have a different take on it. I think it basically impinges on one of the most basic instincts of human beings, and that is to conceive. In an arranged Indian marriage, when the girl departs for her matrimonial home, her mother gives her a number of advices, and one such advice is that don't get overwhelmed and don't disclose everything too soon to your husband. So, at times, probably, non-disclosure is very important for marital harmony. Tiger Woods can vouch for it. <laughs> similarly, similarly, you know, the government of India is in a great obliging mood these days. Only day before yesterday, after just a seven or eight days of sporadic agitation somewhere, they considered Telangana. If tomorrow the same mood of obliging people, if they declare that there will be no income tax from next financial year, do you think people will still disclose their income? People like me have no option, but people like you have a number of options. You will disclose one salary to your mother, another to your spouse, maybe third one to your girlfriend or boyfriend. So this tendency is very much there. And this tendency gets all the more aggravated when you are form of government, when you think you are in a state of patronage, when you think you are the one who holds the information. That is why when a minister in this country comes to take oath, which oath does he take? Secrecy. Oath of secrecy. He doesn't take oath of transparency. So this is basically a regime of secrecy which has been there throughout the world. And this is one uh, phrase which I am very fond of from an Israeli author of Israel, that even in a democracy, there is always a conflict between the two tendencies. The tendencies to conceal and tendency to know about others. And if this is the situation in a democracy, you can understand what is the situation in other parts of the world. And then have a look at some of these 70 countries. Can you, can you, can you tell me what is the common point in the countries in the first bracket? 